Marcos, Binay, Senator Drillon, uh, Senator Tolentino, magandang umaga po. I am Jose Roberto Martinez Danar, Secretary of the Presidential Communications Operations Office. Uh, joining me in this budget hearing are the other officials of the PCOO and heads of our attached agencies, as, as mentioned by our Secretary. Before we present the details of our proposed budget for fiscal year 2022, we prepared a short audio visual presentation for a snapshot of the work that we do in PCOO for the past year. If the chair would allow us to play the AVP. Please proceed. Government communications has and will always play an integral role in making known the government services and programs to Filipinos here and abroad. As the premier communications arm of the government, the Presidential Communications Operations Office, or PCOO, remains true to its mandate of providing accurate, timely, and relevant information to the public. The PCOO is also working continuously to amplify the programs and policies of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte and the executive branch as the administration leads the nation towards progress and delivers a more comfortable life for Filipinos. The PCOO has accomplished even more amidst these trying times when information is very much needed. Public service remains the top priority of Secretary Martin Andanar and the PCOO. Together with its attached agencies, the PCOO formulated new programs to cater to the needs of the people. The Laging Handa Information and Communications Campaign was launched in order to deliver information during times of disasters and other crises in the country. It has proven to be an effective communications platform during this pandemic as well. As such, the Network Briefing News Program and the Laging Handa Public Briefing were launched to provide the Filipino public with regular updates on the government's efforts and responses to address the COVID-19 situation and other pressing issues. Secretary Andanar also continues to fulfill his responsibilities as the Cabinet Officer for Regional Development and Security in Northern Mindanao Accords 10 and the designated Big Brother of Laguna Province in its fight against the impact of the pandemic. Our fight against disinformation through our Dismiss Disinformation campaign has helped keep the people informed about what fake news is and educated them on the effects of disinformation. Long before the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, the PCOO has initiated virtual pressers to connect local and international media with government officials and policymakers. We didn't have this kind of tool in the past. We buy the news from other news agency or uh, we pay people to, to go there. But uh, with the PCOO, with this new platform that we've introduced us, the information is free. And with the implementation of community quarantines, the PCOO has repurposed the virtual presser. It became the main government platform to inform the public on the government's programs and actions in response to the pandemic. I would like to credit the PCOO for being the bridge sa mga mamamahayag at mga kinauukulang ahensya, hindi lamang ng pamahalaan, bagkos ay ng pribadong sektor. Kasi alam naman natin na mahirap mag-cover, pumunta mismo sa labas. Kung baga kahit nasa bahay, makakakuha kami ng diretsong sagot sa mga kinauukulan, sa mga tamang officials ng government. So, through the virtual presser, mas na-expound yung issue kasi yung resource persons the different virtual pressers, reporting tours, and other relevant programs initiated by the PCOO bridge gaps in information dissemination and allowed media to directly engage with relevant government agencies and its officials. I joined the, the Malawi coverage in 2019. We got a lot of uh, uh, footages that we cannot cover uh, normally. And uh, we, we, we did a live broadcasting during our trip to the war zone. And we invite uh, ASIC JV to join us to tell the Chinese audience about the progress of reconstruction of Malawi city, which was well received by the Chinese audience. That will be, uh, that one is very nice. We're now here in uh, Marawi. Pagdating sa mga ganitong uri ng storya, hindi ka naman basta-basta uh, ikaw lang susugod, di ba, sa gera. So, napakahalaga na may assistance, napakahalaga na merong tulong from PCOO kung paano kami madadala doon, 
kakaiba experience siya because you know sumakay kami hindi sa isang typical commercial flight kundi sa isang Philippine Air Force airplane so with the help of PCO and Malacanya mas nagkakaroon ng amplification kung ano ba yung nabibision namin on our stories. Through the Laging Handa docu-series created by the PCOO, the on-the-ground situation of our frontliners and healthcare workers as well as the efforts of the government in fighting COVID-19 were showcased. Explainer videos called the Vaxplainer were also created to inform the public about the COVID-19 vaccines sourced directly from scientific and medical experts. This is to debunk all misconceptions about the vaccines and to encourage everyone to take part in the government's vaccination program. As digital platforms become more prominent and with the public mainly using online media as the main source of information, the PCOO has also maximized its digital and social media presence and assets by creating more digital content meant for informing the Filipinos. The PCOO is also working closely with the National Task Force on COVID-19 and the Interagency Task Force by providing coverage, media assistance, and technical support to disseminate much-needed information to the public about inoculations and other related events in battling the pandemic. The PCOO also strengthened its structural assets. It launched the Mindanao Media Hub in March 2021, which marked the start of the full operations of the PCOO and its attached agencies in the said state-of-the-art facility. The Mindanao Media Hub, a legacy project of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, serves as the main broadcast facility of the government in the Mindanao region and is envisioned to provide tailor-fitted content for the people of Mindanao. This year, the PCOO will also be constructing its first ever Government Communications Academy in Manolo for Titch Bukidnon, which will serve as a training hub for information officers of both national and local government agencies. Eventually, the Visayas Media Hub will also rise to serve as the main broadcast hub in the Visayas region and to answer the Visaya audience's need for content. Despite the challenges brought about by the pandemic, the PCOO together with its attached agencies continues to keep President Duterte accessible and visible to the people, much like he has always been for the past years. The PCOO, faithful to its mandate, has helped inform the people of the President's programs and policies as well as his legacies to the Filipinos. This helped to keep them informed of the services and programs for them as well as garnered high public trust and satisfaction ratings for the President. To show the strong will of the President in stopping terrorism in the country, the PCOO launched an anti-terrorism documentary which featured former rebels and the affected families of the soldiers who were killed during terrorist attacks. The PCOO is also engaged with the National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea as a member in promoting the policies and undertakings of the Duterte administration. The PCOO has provided support to the communications campaign of the NTF-WPS and utilized its platforms such as the virtual presser to give the public truthful updates and information about the West Philippine Sea. The PCOO also continues to communicate the message of the President to the international audiences to promote our government policies abroad and forge new relationships with some foreign media entities. The commitment of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte against contractualization has also taken shape as more and more employees in PCOO were regularized through the total number of 50 plantilla positions for PCOO proper since 2018 to first quarter of 2021 and additional plantilla positions as well as under the Philippine Information Agency. The Freedom of Information program has made it easier for Filipinos to get access to public information and official records in offices within the executive branch. Ang FOI ay isa tong mekanismo kung saan ang Pilipino ay maaring makakuha ng impormasyon mula sa ating gobyerno. It builds trust kasi alam naman natin na malaki po ang distrust ng taong bayan sa gobyerno and the FOI is a mechanism wherein it rebuilds that trust. This is the centerpiece of President Duterte's platform on good governance and transparency. Especially po during this pandemic, sobrang hirap po na mag-acquire ng mga legit uh, true information and sources. Nagamit ko po yung EFOI, yung portal. So mabilis lang siya. Um, the information that you've requested will be given two to three days. Kumigit po mulang 
mga 95 to almost 100,000 na ang natanggap natin na FOI request. Bumuo ng uh, Project Management Office ang DBM, pati na rin ang PCOO sa ilalim po ng uh, pamumunuan ni Secretary Martin Andanar na go oversee no, ng implementation ng FOI. At uh, tinutulungan natin ang libo-libo nating mga FOI officers na nagkalat sa lahat ng mga ahensya para matugunan nila ang mga tanong ng ating mga kababayan. Amidst the pandemic, the PCOO never stopped doing its work and continues to accomplish and generate results. In 2020, the APO production unit garnered a revenue of more than 1 billion pesos, including more than 721 million pesos from the e-passport project with the Department of Foreign Affairs. It continues to help strengthen the high security printing needs of various government agencies. The Bureau of Broadcast Services and the Philippine Broadcasting Service through Radio Pilipinas partnered with PCOO and PTV have disseminated timely, relevant and accurate information with regards to COVID-19 pandemic. This has helped many Filipinos to always be prepared and in the know about battling COVID-19. PBS has also upgraded its equipment and physical facilities as well as improved its programming to attract more listeners. Ang PBS po has embarked on a very uh, ambitious program to rehabilitate yung mga gamit po natin. And as you can see also dito sa Philippine Broadcasting Service, we have now made uh, procured equipment na masasabi po nating not only is it competitive, but also it is world class. The Bureau of Communication Services has produced a total of 94,880 printed information materials in 2020. The BCS has continuously proven to be globally competitive and resilient with its ISO 9001-2015 certification from the Worldwide Quality Assurance or WQA Limited. Aiming high and achieving results through our partnership with the IBC, we successfully aired numerous initiatives, programs, and other information and communication campaigns. As we continue to value educating the public, the PCOO with IBC and the Department of Education work together to deliver alternative learning modules over free TV and online through the Handang Isip, Handa Bukas program. In 2020, the News and Information Bureau has submitted 28,436 news stories covering all branches of the government and has been continuously releasing updates about the actions and engagements of the President. The Philippine News Agency under the News and Information Bureau strengthened its online presence by giving its website a new modern look and has regained reach, registering an upward trend of website visits. Giving it a fresh look, plus um, content. Ibig sabihin, we serve the, the purpose. The PCOO also created one of its new mechanisms in covering and disseminating news and informing the public through the integrated news team. Meaning, pag integrated, share stories. Case in point na lang is sa probinsya. So pag walang PTV sa isang lugar pero PNA meron, yun na yung nag and then we share the stories. Kumbaga, we pulled our resources. Kumbaga, hindi competition. Nakakatuwa dun, it's the sharing among government media. That never happened before, I believe. Together with the National Printing Office, safety measures against COVID-19 were implemented through the following. An increase in productivity was also recorded as new machines and equipment were acquired. Serving as the main public information arm, the Philippine Information Agency promoted government efforts through grassroots communications which disseminate and explain, explain, explain government policies and programs to the Filipino people. Kami, nandito kami ulit ngayon from the Philippine Information Agency ay nagbabalik dito sa Laguna para ipagpatuloy ang ating information campaign tungkol sa COVID-19 at ang mga programa pa ng national government na makakatulong sa panahong ito.
To support the fulfillment of its mandate, the PIA will have its new office buildings in Cordillera Administrative Region and Cagayan Valley. The PIA, with its more than 90 social media pages and on-ground communications, reaches all parts of the country to inform, inform, inform the citizenry. With utmost dedication, the People's Television Network Incorporated, or PTV, devoted 90% of its airtime to news, public affairs, and to support the different information programs and campaigns of the government and the president, particularly against the COVID-19 pandemic. Even before the time of President Duterte, talagang nagkaroon na ng plano para i-modernize, so to speak, ang PTV. Natupad lamang ito noong time ni President Duterte. Bumili tayo ng mga equipment na state of the art. In-upgrade natin ang ating mga studios, ang ating mga technical centers dito. And at the same time, pinalawak pa natin yung reach ng PTV. Nagtayo tayo ng mga transmitters, nagtayo tayo ng mga provincial stations, lalo na sa mga strategic points dito sa Philippines para lahat ng mga tao ay makakapanood ng PTV. As the reliable and productive broadcast arm of the government, the presidential broadcast staff, Radio Television Malacanang, has aired 1,999 live broadcasts on the president's press conferences, dialogues, special events, radio messages, provincial and foreign trips, among others, in 2020. Due to RTVM's efforts in live streaming the president's speeches, the president has been more visible to the public, most especially on social media. These live streams were amplified by media hookups. After decades of no improvement, the RTVM under Secretary Andanar's watch has also underwent physical renovations and technical upgrade. After 31 years, kita mo, eh, nagkakaroon na ng pagbabago dito sa radio, television, marakad. And all the hard work and dedication of our employees paid off. For the first time in the history, the PCOO has earned prestigious recognition for its innovations and commitment to public service, especially during these challenging times. Just recently, the PCOO won awards from local award-giving bodies and eight prestigious international awards from the TV Awards in the Asia-Pacific and International Business Awards. The TV Awards honored Secretary Martin Andanar and the PCOO for their exemplary work in public service and media and recognized the role of PCOO's new strategies and platforms such as the virtual presser, reporting tour, PCOO digital campaign, and PCOO documentaries in keeping the Filipino people informed. Ang responsibilidad ng bawat administrasyon ay ang masiguro na ang susunod na henerasyon na darating ay mas magaan ang kanilang maging trabaho dahil sa mga reforma na ginawa ng nakarang administrasyon. And I am very confident na lahat ng mga nagawa ng aking mga kasamahan dito sa PCO, pwedeng ulitin yung achievement niya. And I think that is the biggest uh, legacy of uh, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte uh, for the Presidential Communications Operations Office. The PCOO has proven its reliability, credibility, and dedication to public service with its track record. We have achieved a lot throughout these past years, but our work is not yet over and we will continue to achieve more in the coming years. The PCOO will always be here and will continue to support and serve the Filipino people through its communications efforts as well as promote the legacy of the President. As we heal, recover, and rise as one nation from the pandemic, together, we can continue to build a better Philippines for the present and future generations. The Presidential Communications Operations Office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, may I now proceed? Go ahead. Let me now proceed to discuss the... Presidential Communications Operations Office proposed 2022 budget. The theme of the PCOO's proposed budget for fiscal year 2022 is communicating the recovery roadmap of the Philippines. This as more Filipinos are getting vaccinated and more sectors of society are reopened and we will assure the people that the government is at their back, backs and that better days are coming for the Philippines. Frank, Frank. The proposed budget of the PCOO and its attached agencies for 2022 amounts to 
1.91 billion pesos. As we recover as a nation, the amount will be used to communicate to the people how the Duterte administration is laying out the path for resilience and sustainability. At the same time, we will build on the gains of this government for the past five years to amplify the pamana ng pagbabago. Samo video. Just as what President Rodrigo Duterte said during his final sauna, it is necessary for us to overcome the crippling fear, anxiety, and uncertainty caused by the threat of, or threat of COVID-19. Hence, there is no better way to quash those worries but to show the people a concrete pathway, not on how we can return to the new normal, but rather gradually step into a new and more resilient society and economy. That is why we are strengthening our one-stop logging Handa communications platform that has proven itself for the past two years. It has given the public extensive, timely, and reliable information for them to prepare for, avoid, and respond to crisis situations such as infectious diseases, man-made disasters, and natural calamities. The agency's proposed 2022 budget is approximately 18% higher than the 1.62 billion peso appropriations this year to continue our mission in being the primary vehicle for consciousness raising, constituency building, and social mobilization in support of the policies, programs, and projects of the presidency, and to serve as a tool for informing, educating, enlightening the citizenry about matters of national importance for inspiring the citizenry to deepen their civic engagement. Nearly half of this amount will go to personnel services followed by the maintenance and other operating expenses getting a 38% share and the capital outlay, which accounts for 16% of the overall agency budget. Getting the lion's share of the proposed budget for next year is the PCOO proper at 740.62 million pesos, followed by the government radio arm, the Bureau of Broadcast Service getting 456.03 million, then our regional information network, the Philippine Information Agency, getting 333.54 million pesos. The presidential broadcast staff, RTVM, will get the fourth largest piece of the pie at 171.86 million pesos, followed by the News and Information Bureau, Government Newswire, at 129.20 million pesos, while the government printing offices, the Bureau of Communication Services, and National Printing Office get 70.59 million and 90 or 9.13 million pesos of the 2022 budget, respectively. This slide shows the comparative matrix of the PCOO and its attached agency's budget for the past three fiscal years. Consistently, the PCO proper, BBS, and the PIA are getting the top three biggest allocation in our department. This slide, meanwhile, compares the original 2022 budget proposal submitted to the DBM, which was halved in the national expenditure program that the president submitted to Congress. Most of these proposals, which were not considered by the DBM, are capital outlay projects that aim to upgrade our broadcast facilities in Luzon and Visayas, as well as the transportation equipment used for the coverage of presidential events and media operation services. The budgetary support to our government own television network for 2022 amounts to 178.63 million pesos, which is nearly a fourth lower than the 234.93 million subsidies to PCOOs, GOCCs this year. 104.94 million pesos of this amount will go to the People's Television Network, Incorporated, to support its continuing modernization program to improve its reach and quality of programs. While 73.69 million pesos will go to the Intercontinental Broadcasting Corporation to support its maintenance and other operating expenses. 
to give you a picture of uh, PTV's reach, here is the heat map of its 15 analog transmitter stations. The darker the shade, the stronger the signal strength. Meanwhile, here are its six digital transmitter stations. While we are on the topic, we would also like to show you the Bureau of Broadcast Services AM and FM stations nationwide to highlight the reach of the government to the people. There are 34 stations nationwide, of which 18 are in Luzon, five are in Visayas, and 11 are in Mindanao. 29 of the 34 overall PBS stations are currently operating. 10 are in full power, 8 in medium power, and 11 in low power. Meanwhile, there are five off-air stations, which are in Baguio, Batanes, Calbayog, CDO, and Tawi-Tawi. DZEG Baguio is off-air due to lightning strike damage, while DWBT Batanes transmitter is currently malfunctioning. Both stations are still currently procuring spare repair equipment. DYOG Calbayog's transmitter, meanwhile, is an old tube-type transmitter that is beyond repair. They have an ongoing procurement process for a 10-kilowatt transmitter, which costs 5 million pesos. DXIM Kagay and the Oros transmitter have also become obsolete and is also undergoing procurement of spare parts and logistics and related materials. DXDC Tawitawi is off air due to the installation of the new transmitter, which is already scheduled for delivery. We have a list of priority stations to be upgraded with a total cost of 82.8 million pesos. These stations are DWPE Togagarao City, DZMQ Dagupan City, DZAG Aguo, DWRS Tayug, DZSR Manila, DWLC Lucena, DWRM Palawan, DWJS Albay, DWOG Kalbayog, DXBN Butuan, DXRG Hingoog, and DXMR Zamboanga City. Shown in this slide are the said radio stations for upgrading with the respective amount required. We will now move on to the PCOO's third GOCC, the APO production unit. The APO production unit remains under the control and supervision of the PCOO for the printing of accountable forms and security printing requirements of the government, such as BIR tax stamps and the DFA's E passport. However, APO as a non-stop, non-profit and non-chartered GOCC is not covered by EO number 518. This means that it is not required to submit its corporate budget to the DBM for its review and approval. This was confirmed by the DBM in their letter dated January 2, 2020. Since APO production unit is a self-sustaining public enterprise, it does not seek any budget assistance from the national government, hence the zero subsidy in the proposed budget. This slide shows the comparative matrix of the GOCC subsidies for the past three years. As can be noted here, it was only in 2019 when the PTV4 received a subsidy for its capital outlay expenditures or projects. This slide also compares the GOCC's original proposed uh, or proposal for next year. And the uh, approved subsidies as included in the 2022 National Expenditure Program. Again, the DBM did not favorably consider the requested financial assistance for the upgrade of the broadcast infrastructure and equipment of the PTV. All in all, the proposed budget of the PCOO as a department plus the subsidy of our two attached GOCCs amounts to 2.09 billion pesos, which is 12.37% of the 
higher than the 1.86 billion pesos in this year's appropriations. This slide provides a quick summary of the 2022 budget for each of our attached agencies categorized into personal services, MOOE, and capital outlay. The PCOO and its attached agencies strongly affirm its commitment in bringing nothing but the truth and hope to the nation. The programs, activities, and projects proposed to be funded herein aim to sustain the momentum gained during the last six years for the enrichment of the quality of public discourse of all matters of governance in order to build a national consensus thereon. We will continue to converge all its efforts in the lagging hand platform, especially in communicating the national vaccination program until the Filipino population is protected against COVID-19. Whatever crisis may arise, this strong platform remain relevant as we tell the Filipino people that we will rise again. We will also strengthen our efforts in not only showing the public of the president's legacy, but also to demystify various issues that concern our country. As a premier, communications arm of the executive branch, our professional and systematic workflow, along with our bold initiatives, allowed us to start to catch up with private media in the Philippines and the rest of the world. To achieve this goal, the PCOO proper's proposed budget is 47% larger than that of this year. This is because of the fourfold year on year increase of the capital outlay, getting a third of the PCO proper allocation. This will be poured on the construction of the Visayas Media Hub, an infrastructure flagship project of the administration, and the acquisition of ICT equipment to enhance office productivity as we wade through this evolving digital space. Meanwhile, the PCOO proper's MOOE is for the rental of office space and ICT requirements related to the development of tri-media information project, reduce spending on local foreign travels and office supplies due to restrictions and adoption of alternative work arrangements brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, and provision of more budget allocation to items which are necessary for our information dissemination efforts, such as advertising expenses. Moreover, let me discuss the PCOO proper's continuing and new projects for 2022. Next year, we will continue the presidential communications program, which aims to achieve public access, engagement, and understanding of presidential policies and government programs, as well as to sustain our priority communications campaign. This includes media operation services, such as media accreditation and relations, dissemination of news and photo releases, as well as the provision of coverage arrangements for presidential events and visits. The Freedom of Information Project pursuant to Executive Order Number 2, Series of 2016, and the acquisition of equipment, furniture, and fixtures needed in the operationalization of the Government Communication Academy in Manolo Fortich Bukidnon, which will serve as a training ground for information officers of both the national and local governments. Following your kind accommodation to funding for the future of government communicators, the project is already ongoing with the DPWH procurement for design and construction of the GCA building, which will house a government TV and radio center, as well as housing facilities for personnel and students. This will institutionalize the training hub that will equip public servants with the principles and ethics of journalism while achieving one voice in the government. We expect the completion of the construction of its building as funded under this year's budget come first or second quarter of 2022. 200 million pesos will be for the design and construction of the first phase of the Visayas Media Hub based in Mandawe, Cebu. The broadcast hub will house state-of-the-art equipment and facilities. This is a major step in realizing the triumvirate of main government broadcast hubs in the three main geographical areas of the country, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. 
following the successful launch of the Mindanao Media Hub in December of 2020. As a complete turnkey infrastructure project in 2022, the centralized and integrated facility will ensure closer coordination and even resource sharing among the government media entities. The tailor-fitted content for the Visayas will in turn result to more effective and wider reach of information dissemination. In fact, with its proposed modern high-definition equipment, the facility will complement our existing analog and digital transmitters in Cebu, Guimaras, Calbayo, Tacloban, and Dumaguete. The original amount proposed for this project is 870 million pesos intended to be utilized fully in 2022, where 300 million will be for the construction of the building and tower and 570 million for the acquisition of modern and high definition TV broadcast equipment facilities and utilities. However, the DBM only recommended 200 million pesos for the construction of the building, thus including the 12 million proposed for site development, the 88 million for fit out, and the 570 million for broadcast equipment and machinery outlay. The DBM further recommended that the remaining amounts, which are not granted, may be subject to a multi-year contracting authority, although the details and breakdown of which for the succeeding years are yet to be finalized. Another project proposed for 2022 is the Trimedia Information Project worth 16.42 million pesos. It aims to provide a centralized repository of news and photo releases, speeches and interviews of the president, transcripts, of press briefings and interviews of the presidential spokesperson, PCO secretary, and other government officials for easy research and retrieval, as well as for improved online monitoring, evaluation, trending, notification, and report generation of data concerning the above mentioned digital electronic files and materials. To this end, materials for systems development and database serve upgrade, as well as subscription to database office processing license software shall be procured. Next is the 16.51 million pesos for the additional information and communication technology ICT requirement of the PCO proper. As part of the ICT projects recommended by the medium term information and communications technology harmonization initiative, steering committee under the PCO's updated information systems strategic plan, new ICT printing equipment and software will be acquired to enable the PCO to ensure that government programs and presidential policies and activities are disseminated in a faster and timely manner to various media outlets. It shall also help establish a more responsive information infrastructure in the dissemination of government news and information to the public, as well as in the discharge of PCOO personnel's duties and responsibilities. It will also ensure continuity or continuity of service in disseminating news and information to the general public in case of power outages, busted cable, disasters, and other disruptive, unavoidable malfunctions, and help us integrate information source and build up databases that will allow easy access to relevant and timely information and improve electronic links within the PCOO. The purchase of these ICT equipment and software will surely augment the capacity and potential reach of our communications campaign. Lastly, 33.95 million pesos will be for the lease of office space and parking slots for the PCOO proper. This corresponds to the budgetary requirements for the transfer of the PCO office or offices to a new building to comply with the directive of the office of the president to vacate the new executive building in Malacanang complex since it shall be occupied by OP offices or units after its renovation. This project to be covered by a five-year contract will ensure the unhampered operation of the agency and serving as a premier arm of the executive branch in engaging and involving the citizenry and the mass media to enrich the quality of public discourse on all matters of governance. 
May we note that this year's budget for the payment of our rent at Times Plaza building only came from the savings under the fiscal year 2020 continuing appropriation since the DBM did not consider our proposal for the purpose last year. In addition, we established a construction committee to look into the possibility of procuring a real property and construction of a building that will be a permanent home of the PCO. Moreover, we will push for three key priority legislation next year to enrich our country's vibrant freedom when it comes to information access, along with the welfare and the capacity of our media workers, as well as the transformation of the government broadcast network. These are the Freedom of Information Bill and the Media Workers Welfare Bill and the People's Broadcasting Corporation Act. The Freedom of Information Bill seeks to institutionalize the FOI across all branches of government, directing them to disclose information on projects and other matters that involve public interest. The Media Workers Welfare Bill, meanwhile, seeks to provide media workers more access in terms of security of tenure, adequate health benefits, housing programs, and appropriate hazard and overtime pay, insurance, among others, especially in this difficult time. In spite of its laudable swift passage in the House of Representatives, we are still awaiting for the Senate to pass such a key legislation on the Duterte administration. The People's Broadcasting Corporation Charter filed under House Bill Numbers 1952, 8001, and 8012 envisions a state television network which will meet international standards that could propel government media to be level with other international broadcasting networks such as BBC of the UK, PBS of the US, and Al Jazeera of Qatar, among others. Through the bill, it will provide independence of the PBC, broadcast hubs in Visayas, Mindanao, and Luzon, and assurance of annual appropriations for at least 10 years. It is our job to deliver accurate and valuable information with excellence, responsibility, and integrity to the Filipino people so that they may be transformed into informed citizens and thought leaders who will partner with us in achieving President Duterte's legacy of providing a secure, comfortable, strongly rooted life for all Filipinos that cascades to future generations. Until then, our primary objective remains, bring hope to our people that better days are coming for the Philippines. That, your honors, is our proposed budget for 2022 in a nutshell. Thank you very much for your kind attention, Mr. Chairman, and we are now ready to take your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, I will now call the senators uh, to ask their questions. I will start with the minority floor leader out of seniority. Uh, uh, will the minority floor leader uh, pose some questions right away, or would you rather wait for the others? Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'm here. If there are no questions from our other colleagues. I have a few questions on Secretary on Secretary Andanar. Oh, please proceed, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Mr. Secretary. Um, yes. I feel so old to start with because it was your father who was my friend. <laughs> but you are also a friend. <laughs> anyway, um, firstly, uh, your uh, present budget for PCOO proper in 2021 is 502.2 million. In the proposed budget, if this goes up to 740 million or an increase of 238.3 million or about 47%. The total increase of PCOO is, uh, uh, is uh, 293 point one million of which 283.3 or 81 percent of the increase of the PCOO budget is lodged into 
one office, and that is your office, PCOO proper. Uh, can we be uh, benefited for the record uh, with an explanation why 83% uh, of the proposed increase of the PCOO budget goes to your office? Mr. Secretary Andana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the question. Yes, you, you are correct, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the increase is uh, more than 200 million because uh, the 200 million, Mr. Chairman, uh, would be allocated uh, to the Visayas Media Hub project. It's a capital outlay. So, hence, the substantial increase of the PCOO budget. The Visayas Media Hub, uh, Mr. Chairman, will be the first a state-of-the-art media facility that will cover the entire Visayas, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So this is a capital outlay for the so-called Visayas Media Hub. Is that correct, sir? 200 million, Mr. Chairman, will, will be for the capital outlay of okay. the Visayas Media Hub. Okay, and uh, the remaining uh, uh, 83, I'm sorry, yes, 38 uh, million of the increase, there is an increase of 238.3. You're saying 200 million of that uh, will be capital outlay. May we know uh, the, uh, where the balance of 38 million will go? Mr. Chairman, the balance of that will go to the rental of office space of the Presidential Communications Operations Office because, uh, Mr. Chairman, we were already uh, booted out or kicked out of uh, the national or the new executive building in Malacanang uh, since uh, the office of the president uh, has given us notice that they will be using already the space, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay, so these are uh, these are budget for lease payments. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, now uh, this will not go into uh, uh, what we call. Uh, um, job orders, job hires? Mr. Chairman, uh, on the details of the job hires, but what uh, I am I am confident that 200 plus the 30 million will go to the rental, maybe a few million uh, will go to, to some details. And uh, USEC Chris Ablan, who is my uh, finance uh, uh, USEC, uh, can give you more details on, on the remaining uh, millions, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, j just on the, uh, I, I, maybe I can go to her later, uh, but uh, maybe we can go to your to your staffing com complement, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary. First, is it correct that you have three thousand five hundred nine uh, regular items in your budget? I repeat, three thousand five hundred nine regular I uh, items in your budget for in your for regular employees. Mr. Chairman, uh, will you permit me to? Uh... To, to direct the question to Undersecretary Chris Aplan so that uh, he can answer in more detail, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay. Oh, just to confirm that first, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, tama ba yan? 3,509 po ang inyong regular items? Uh, I'm not, I, I don't think so, Mr. Chairman. I don't think it's... Uh, staff. You can consult your staff, Mr. Secretary. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, you said Chris Aplan is here, Mr. Chairman. Secretary, uh, you said Aplan, please uh, answer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to answer the uh, question of uh, Senator Adrilon, we have a total of 3,883 plantilla positions for the PCO family. This includes the PCO par proper, RTVM, Bureau of Broadcast Services, Bureau of Communication Services, National Printing Office, News and Information Bureau, Philippine Information Agency, People's Television Network, and I don't need to detail using uh, uh, Ablan. So you're saying again, 3,883, Mr. Chair. 3,883. Okay. And this is the uh, uh, breakdown. All right. 3,000, uh, 3,883. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> how many positions are filled, Yusek uh, uh, Ablan? Of the 3,883 plantilla positions, how many uh, are filled up? Mr. Chair, of the 3,883 positions of the PCO family, 2,107 are currently filled as of 31 August, Mr. Chair. 
How many? 3,000? 2,107 as of August 31, Mr. Chair. 3,107 are filled up up to three of the 3,883. 2,100, um, Mr. Seven. Senator, Mr. Chair. 2,000. Sorry. 2,107 is filled up. Sorry. Is filled up out of a total of 3,000. 883. Is that, is that, that what we're That saying? is correct, Mr. Chair. That is correct, sir. Uh, that's yeah. roughly 50, yeah. 54% would be filled up and 46% would be vacant. Sorry, sorry. That is, that is correct, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay. So how many vacancies do you have? Mr. Chair, we have a vacancy as of August 31 of 1,776 plantilla positions. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so you, of the 8,883 plantilla positions, you have filled up 2,107 or 54%, leaving a vacancy rate of a vacancies of 1,776 or 46%. Uh, is that correct, sir? That is correct, Mr. Chair. By the way, how are you related to Rukito? Uh, he is my father, Mr. Chair. I'm his son. My goodness gracious. I really feel old. It's your father's uh, of, uh, <laughs> of Secretary Andanar and Yusek Ablan, who are friends of mine, and I'm sure also of, of Senator Gordon. That is correct. That is correct. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, just to put some light moments in this <laughs> otherwise boring presentation, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Anyway, going back. So how many casuals and job orders do you have? Uh, um, yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, what we have on the slide right now is uh, our number of contract of service uh, personnel. So, where, where, uh, is where is uh, that? Uh, on, on the personnel. right side. Okay, COS personnel. How, medyo yata ito. How many is this? COS personnel. These are uh, both casuals and job orders. Is that correct? Um, Mr. Chair, the civil service has a different um, classification for... Um, job order, uh, but uh, they, they are intertwined. Uh, they are interrelated. Job order and contract of but service but are, are more or less the same. Uh, the total number, Mr. Chair, of the PCO family is 1,400. Orders and casuals are not the same under the civil service and under any government plantilla. Come on, Chris. Sorry. My yes. apologies, Mr. Chair. With the intelligence of Senator Drillon and Senator Gordon. Malina po eh. Okay, uh, so uh, thank you, Senator Aimee. Okay, can you can you give us a more accurate answer uh, according to Senator Aimee? Uh, your uh, your citation of the Civil Service Commission rule is that correct? Um, Mr. Chair, what we have are our uh, contract of service. So uh, they are different from casual. They are different from uh, contractual. Um, uh, yeah, so so on, on the screen, uh, our contract of service is. Uh, uh, wait, as, slowly, as slowly, slowly, slowly. <laughs> How many contract of service or, or job orders do you have? Isa isa yun natin. Um, Mr. Chair, since I'm the undersecretary for the PCO proper, I can only, at this point, I can only answer for the PCO proper. For the job orders and contractuals uh, of the other agencies, the heads of agencies will be providing you an answer. Uh, if it would if it would be it would if it would be okay, Mr. Chair, I have the the numbers uh, for our uh, casual, temporary, contractual, contract of service. Thank you. Yeah, qualification. Give us the numbers first, uh, as you as you as it appears on your records. Okay. Yes, Mr. How many, uh, uh, contract of service. How many casuals? How many whatever you have? Yes, Mr. Chair. For, 
PCCO proper. PCOO proper. That, that, yeah, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chair. For our casual and temporary, we have three. Casual and temps, you have? Three. Three, okay. Contractual, we have one. Contractual, you have one. Oh, ano pa? Contract of service on the screen, sir, is 330. 300, ayun. You, di, di, dito yung mga troll, ano? Hindi pa, wala pa kami troll. Diba? Eh, kala ko, masyadong marami. Dito yung mga troll siguro. Hindi eh, ba? <laughs> wala, wala, wala pong troll dyan, uh, Mr. Chair. Wala kang troll. Eh, Siyempre, hindi mo aaminin na uh, Yusek Ablan na uh, may troll kayo. Eh, yung tatay mo, magaling din dyan noon. Nagkasama ko pa sa Russia. Ah, magaling din mag-troll kung sinong KGB. Eh, ah. So, <laughs> tawa ng tawa si Senator Aimee. Oh. Alam lang yung totoo sinasabi ko. Eh. Anyway, so you have PCOO proper 330. Uh, and what is the total of, of uh, contract of service personnel in your uh, PCOO family? So, yun ang ilagay natin. Ilan ba? Ilan ba trolls mo? <laughs> Wala po. Again, Mr. Chair, ang total po... Sorry. Ang, okay, kung hindi, ayaw mong tawagin na troll, ilan ang, uh, ang job orders mo? sa inyong uh, pamilya ng inyong mga ahensya. Um Mr. Chair, uh, what we I do not have data on job order. I have data on contract of service, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, yeah, oh, contract of service oh, no, no. Cont ano, cont uh, what is COS? Contract, contract of, of service. Huh? Contract of service, Mr. Chairman. Contract, contract of service. Of service. Yes. Oh. Wala COT dito? Uh, wala pong COT. <laughs> wala COT. COS lang po. Oh, sige, uh, ito COS, otherwise known as COT. O oh, sige, ilan yan? 1,479, Mr. Chair. Jesus Christ. 1,479 COTs. COS for the entire oh, oh, sige, COS. COS. Total, hindi ka naman mapapaamin. I might as well make light of it. But anyway, hindi <laughs> mo man aaminin na may troll kayo. Anyway, so 1,000... 479 uh, COS uh, in your entire uh, family of uh, the PCOO. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Chair. Now, <clears throat> you have 1,776 vacancies but you hire 1,479 COS. Is that correct? In the yes. entire uh, um, family, is a PCOO family. Yes, 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 Mr. Chairman. What is the total payroll or, 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 or contract for this? Or 1,479? Um, let me retrieve the number, Mr. Chair. Sorry? Let me retrieve the number, Mr. Yes, Chair. We only please. have... Please. Uh... Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I only have the data for uh, fiscal year 2020 for contract of service for PCO proper, uh, it it excludes uh, contract of service of the other agencies, Mr. Chair. If it would be okay for the good senator, uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, uh, yung ibang troll agency sa kana iba na ho. Iba. Yung for 2020, Mr. Chair, uh, oh. the total amount for contract of service uh, was 76 million po. 76 million. And uh, how much is your PS for your uh, plantilla positions that uh, uh, that you have uh, filled up? In other words, how much was your payroll for the 2,107 uh, uh, regular items filled up um, in 2020? Um, Mr. Chair, I have data on the PCO proper 
uh, personnel services and uh, the total for the PCO family. For PCO proper, Mr. Chair, the personal services amounts to 117,269,000. For the total of the entire family, Mr. Chair, it's 764,432,000. Uh, okay, so in the uh, PCO proper, uh, uh, you, your, uh, your PS for the regular positions is 117 million your uh, contract hires or what we call the trolls is 76 million tama po ba yan based on the records that is correct mr chair don't you find this a little <laughs> uh, how would you, uh, don't you find this a little uh, uh, Odd that while you have one first, you have one thousand seven hundred seventy six vacancies, but you hired one thousand four hundred seventy six uh, contract of service or what we call trolls, um, and uh, you spent uh, seventy six million for these trolls as against your payroll of one hundred seventeen million. Uh, is this the correct way of using your funds? Uh, why cannot you hire and fill up your uh, unfilled positions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, yes, uh, I confirm, Mr. Chair, when I uh, saw the numbers and the data, uh, I found it uh, odd that uh, we had uh, 88 uh, vacant uh, positions. Can I ask the staff to show uh, the, the chair uh, our slide? I only uh, assumed uh, the undersecretary position for administ for finance in February, Mr. Chair, and uh, undersecretary for administration in April. Uh, since then, Mr. Chair, uh, we have published 62 out of the 88 vacant positions. Out of the 62 published positions, uh, we have already hired uh, 23. Uh, 11 are being uh, approved for appointment but have yet to assume the office. Uh, 17 are uh, under scrap and, scrap and build. Um, we have uh, one vacant position due to retirement and we have 12 items under delibera de deliberation of the personal selection board. So under my management, Mr. Chair, as undersecretary for administration as of April 2021, and under Secretary for Finance as February 2021, we have uh, made efforts, Mr. Chair, to fill up the 88 vacant positions. All right. Uh, but uh, before I go any further, uh, would you have all your, your, your casuals and temp temporaries would only be three, did you say? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. That's three, only three. for the PCOO proper. Yes, Mr. Chair. At this point, I can only speak for the PCO right. proper, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, because my notes indicate that you have, uh, in your family of the PCCO, PCOO family, there are 121 casuals and 1,415 job order personnel. Uh, apparently, out of this 1,000, uh, you're saying your you, my my number my figure in my research is even lower because you're saying that in the P, in the PCOO proper you have 1,479. Um, can you go back to your people and give us a more consolidated uh, uh, numbers on on this uh, staffing, both uh, on in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, number of regular employees, number of casuals, number of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, job orders, both in the PCCO and in your uh, attached or agencies or whatever you have called them, okay? Yes, Mr. Chairman. But we're gonna be clearer picture because halo halo eh, huh? All right. Yes, Mr. Chair. We, we do will not wait. have trolls, Mr. Chair, but only contract of service. Yes, yes. Uh, contract of trolls or contract of service are the same. Diba? Hindi naman. Hindi po. Ah, hindi. Okay, sige. 
maghahanap ako ng ebidensya that uh, you are hiring trolls. <laughs> okay. Sige. Now, uh, Yusek Ablan, you are as good as your father, uh, by the way, in answering questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll take that as a compliment, Mr. Chair. Ang tatay mo si Alikabok, ang tawag dyan, di ba? Tama ba yan, Aimee? Oo. Oh. Oh, si Alikabok. Oh, sige. Tama, alam mo ba yun? Nang tawag sa tatay mo si Alikabok? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Ha? Huh? Yes. You know, you know that, uh, sir? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. What about you? How are you called? I just Chris Ha? Huh? Chris, yes, Chris. I am entertaining only my good colleague and friend, Senator <laughs> Amy. She's enjoying our exchange. All right. How many casuals do you intend to hire uh, starting January 2022 under your budget? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, right now we are reducing the number of uh, contract of service by absorbing uh, many of our con uh, uh, many of our contract of service as regular plantilla, uh, but uh, the items are still open for filling up, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have we will return with we will return to Senator Adrilon with the number uh, after this, Mr. Chair, if it if it would be okay. Uh, but uh, we will we will have to calculate that, Mr. Chair. That's okay, but I couldn't understand what you're saying. Uh, can you be clearer? Uh, uh, that time you are not like your father. Your father was always very clear when uh, <laughs> he explains things. My, my apologies, Mr. Chair. We are not yet finished in uh, filling up the vacant items. So ah, we cannot, okay. I cannot give you a number for January 2022 for okay. our contract of service. Now, your 1,479 trolls who are now uh, uh, with contract of service, do you intend to continue hiring them in January of 2022? For our contract of service in PCO proper, Mr. Chair, our intention is to absorb those who are qualified to the 88 vacant items of the PCO proper. Uh, so that you're saying that by January, you will no longer have uh, COS or contract of troll uh, contracts? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, we, we do have uh, downloaded funds from our partner agencies like the Philippine Statistics Authority. Uh, and the downloading of funds include the hiring of contract of service, uh, which include highly technical personnel. And uh, so, yes, Mr. Chair, we will still be hiring contract of service in January 2022 as the contracts or memorandum of agreements with these agencies uh, 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 instruct us to hire our uh, highly technical contract of service, Mr. Chairman. For purposes of financial planning, how many COS will you have in January, February, March, April, May? Hanggang May lang kasi election sa May eh. Oh. Sa limang buwan na yan, magka ilang uh, contract of service personnel ang, uh, ang intensyon ninyong uh, kunin sa inyong ahensya? Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I do not have the number uh, for that. Uh, we, we will return to uh, the, yes. the, the data. If you can return to me later, uh, you can consult and just give me the numbers all we're interested in, okay? Yes, sir. So the, the question is, will you renew uh, the hiring of 1,479 contract of service personnel? Uh, uh, and how many more will you hire if uh, you intend to hire now? So I will wait, I wait for that, uh, Yusek Ablan. Now, <clears throat> your PS for the current year is 874 million. Is that correct, sir? No. Is that correct or not? Uh, our PS uh, for the PCO family, Mr. Chair, is uh, 820 million 951,000 uh, pesos, 2021 GAA. This is for the entire 
si uh, ano uh, si entire PCO family PCO family 800 how much 820 million 951,000 pesos Mr. Chairman Okay 820 let's say put 820 million for your no your uh, um and uh the for the entire PCO family what would be the budget for casuals and job orders and trolls definitely definitely mr chair no no budget for trolls okay, but, no, okay uh, sorry for casuals and contract of service if you want to use that term yes mr chair we will provide you with the the number i do not okay. have the breakdown right now okay see you now give me that uh, data uh, excuse me, Senator Dillon. Uh, yes, sir. May, may I request the Senator to ask uh, uh, the PCOO to submit all the names and the records of the so called uh, contract of trolls, uh, contract of service? Uh, yes. Para, uh, yes, in fact, sir, that's in my notes. And if I may just be, uh, uh, more, pre be more precise, uh, Mr. Chairman, we, I would, we would need and submit to the committee all the names the addresses, the educational attainment, and the job description of this 1,479 that you have mentioned. Because you're saying these are not trolls. So I would like to see their names, their addresses, the educational attainment, their job descriptions of the uh, 1,749, uh cos and whatever is uh, the uh, the other uh, the others the other uh, uh cos in the other in your other agencies okay mr yes, chairman yes, yes mr chairman with the permission of the minority floor leader yes sure just, nice just, to hear. yeah yeah know, just an additional submission can they also submit submit their attendance sheet if they report in the office of the PCOO proper or uh, the other offices. Uh, more accurately, the technical term is daily. Uh, daily, daily time record. Daily time record. Daily time record. Yes, can we have that uh, under Secretary Ablan? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we will be providing the names of the contract of service personnel, their position, their place of assignment, the date the their date of start of engagement period the date of end of engagement period as well as their functions and responsibilities uh terms of reference terms of reference and job description we will we will abide by the instruction of the yes, committee and also the addresses the addresses of these people we will not uh, ask for the date of birth just the address we, we will confirm, Mr. Chair, with our legal office if we are allowed to disclose the addresses to uh -huh. comply with the Data I, Privacy Act. I the other secretary, these are public records and you're public asking. Uh -huh. So you better provide us with all the information that we need uh, in order that we will be convinced that uh, this budget is properly used. And among the things that I am asking for, or we are asking for in the committee is that you give us all the names, all the addresses, all the educational attainments, the job description of each uh, of these 1,700 plus plus uh, employees, and the other data, uh, the, the, the daily service record uh, of these people that they report for work. Obviously, you know what uh, why we need this, Hindiba, uh, Mr. Ablano. So don't, don't invoke the don't invoke any confidentiality here, because these are public funds. Uh, these are public funds. Uh, these are subject to audit. If these are subject to audit, these are subject to scrutiny by the branch of government who is holding the purse. You are asking for appropriation of public funds. We have the right to know how you use these public funds. And as part of our right to know uh, is to make sure that these are not 
of fictitious uh, names and that the names are performing the jobs, even if they are trolls, we will accept that as long as they are legitimate and, and existing. Iba yung, iba yung, <laughs> baka wala namang ganong pangalan na, but, you know, we will not ask for the fingerprints of these people, mind you. Hindi uh, naman ganun, ha? So, pakiproduce lang, uh, Yusek Ablan, ha? Sungguh yes. ito tayo mo pag hindi mo binig ginawa ito. Yes, Mr. Chair, he will turn over the grave if I don't submit it. Actually, Mr. Chair, we already have the document. Yeah, turn uh, it over. Turn it over. Turn like it over. Yeah. Para, yes, yes, Mr. Oh, Chair. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we will submit it, Mr. Chair. Sige. Okay. Gordon, if you don't mind po on the same subject matter while we're in the uh we're in the we're on a roll requesting uh, information may i also ask um regarding the contractual hires uh which by the way there's a huge difference between job orders or contracts of hire versus casuals or contractuals ang laki ng pagbabago niyan dahil na uh, unang una mula sa budget yung isa galing sa ps yung isa tinataguan natin at nilalagay sa mooe Kaya wag na tayo magbiroan. Alam naman natin yan. Ano? Matagal na tayo sa gobyerno. Tumanda na tayo dito. So, what I would like to ask po, if the chair would allow, and uh, with the indulgence of Senator Drillon, maybe also know what are the projects and job descriptions of these employees um, that are so technical and so specialized that no permanent government employee can possibly perform them. So this is what I needed to understand uh, because I completely baffled also by the fact there are no policy guidelines at all on hiring employees. Your contracts of work are very random. They don't appear to have uh, any uh, semblance of uniformity or even the requisite civil service commission regional office approval. Can you also indicate alongside the name of each of these job orders, the approval or findings of the CSC? Kasi, di ba, lahat tayo dumadaan sa civil service kahit papano, miski yung job order, hindi naman pwedeng palusutin yan kahit hindi civil service uh, qualified. So, yun lang, kasi masyadong maraming kababalaghan dito na nabanggit mo yung PSA. Eh, yung PSA, di ba, naglipat ng 94 million yan. Ngayon, sinasabi ninyo na iahire na lang ninyo yung PSA. Ano ba yon? Yung pera ng galing sa PSA, pupunta sa PCOO, babalik na naman sa PSA through hiring. Medyo nalilito ako. And also, uh, I think uh, you are a lawyer. Why did PCOO have to hire a private lawyer to do its job? even bypassing the soldier. Marami pong tanong tungkol sa human resources ng PCOO. So, uh, thank you na lang kung meron kayong maibigay na information. Thank you, Senator G. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Uh, I would like uh, to ask uh, the PCOO uh, to uh, uh, make sure that the answers are given formally and that uh, they're accurate. And that they be given. Uh, we should have another uh, next meeting. We shall uh, have that. Uh, also, may I ask also, how long have these people been hired? Are they been hired annually or the previous years? I'd like to get the record of all the previous uh, hires. Uh, you know, job orders, contract of uh, uh, I mean, trolls, wow, service, a uh, service. Uh, ano ba ba? Pwede bang pakibigyan yung lahat yon, please? Previous years, uh, from uh, the time you started hiring, when did you start hiring, uh, Secretary uh, Underard? So, Chairman, we started see, uh, every year. How many contractuals are you hiring? Because I find it uh, 
uh, strange that you're hiring a lot more people uh, in terms of uh, proportion, kahit na one, almost, uh, almost by the thousands, di ba? Uh, lumalabas, eh, 1,497 ba yun? Uh, Four. Four, seven, nine. One thousand four hundred seventy-nine. Why So can we have that? Uh, uh, since you started hiring, uh, can you give an answer? Did you start hiring in uh, two thousand sixteen, two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen, two thousand twenty? Can you give us all these uh, uh, temporary hires? Uh, I'll put them under the classification of temporary hires. Uh, maybe you can give the committee uh, something so we can justify it on the floor because a lot of Senators have asked me to ask some of the questions that have already been propounded by Senator Dillon. Uh, so, uh, in fact, many of them are so interested that they have asked me to extend the hearing uh, so that they can attend. Uh, uh, do you have an answer, Sec uh, Secretary Andanar, please? Mr. Chairman, we'll give you a more detailed report. It will submit it to the Secretariat and we will go back to uh, even uh, before uh, the term of the President. Uh, perhaps uh, President Aquino's time. Yeah. Oh. Marcos, did you have something to say, Senator Marcos? Yes, uh, following the chairman and Senator Drillo, nalilito nga ako kasi humihingi pa sila ng increase sa budgetary allocation for the employment of regular employees. Hindi nga makila pa, nadadagdagan pa. <laughs> Ba't may ganon? Sige. So anyway, they will submit all of this data and... Uh... We hope that you can submit it uh, before the next hearing so that uh, we can analyze and study it, uh, Mr. Andanar. Anyway, I have a few more questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission. Let's go ahead. Uh, but uh, I'd like to say that it should not be given on the day of the hearing. We should have our time to yes. produce it, uh, at least no. days before the hearing. We'll give you enough time. Go ahead, uh, Senator Dillon. Please. You have a budget for social media in 2020. What is this budget for? Social media is how it is described. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I defer to uh, USEC Chris Ablan, who has all the numbers? Uh, yes, also the USEC for administration. You're a lawyer, uh, Mr. Ablan? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Chairman? Mr. Chairman. Where do you finish your law? Uh, UP Diliman, Mr. Chair. College UP of law. Diliman? Yes. You, are, yes you, you graduated from UP College of Law? That is correct, Mr. Chair. University of Law College of the Philippines, sir. So, no, Silonian? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Object to one by. Yes, no excuses. But I can assure you. That your brother, the Senator Gordon, will ask all the questions that is <laughs> need to be asked. Anyway, thank you. But uh, okay, uh, just going back, what is this social media budget for? Uh, let me let me retrieve our uh, information about the social media expense if if you have for twenty twenty, Mr. Chair. Chair, Mr. Chairman, with, with the nice. permission of the minority floor leader, while um, yeah. Yusek Ablan is getting the data, maybe we can ask Secretary Andanar, um, kung ano ba tong programa nila for social media? What is this all about? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, we have several programs, uh, not only social media, but including the broadcast and the face-to-face -face, uh, communication plan, uh, programs like the, the Duterte Legacy, and uh, each program would have their own strategy. So if you will allow us, uh, Mr. Chairman, to, to get a more detailed uh, picture of uh, our programs that has a social media component. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, siguro, Mr. Chairman, just offhand, in general, uh, ano ba tong social media? I mean, we don't need the details, but you know, um, no. just a general description of what it, what it what is it all about. Oh, for instance, Mr. Chairman, uh, the the Philippine ID system. Uh, I think there is a a component there where uh, there is budget for 
uh, boosting on uh, Facebook. Uh, I just couldn't give you the exact uh, the exact uh, name of the project uh, because we have several projects uh, under the PCO, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, we would like to see that and examine it uh, more closely for purposes of the next uh, hearing. Uh, uh, how much was this burst in this budget for social media? Mr. Chairman, we'll have to get. Uh, how much this burst? Uh, Mr. Chairman, 2020. Mr. Chairman, may, may I defer again to our user for finance and admin? He has the, the list of all of those. Uh, uh, monies that were disbursed for all the communication operations. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, who who can answer that? Uh, I I will, Mr. Chair, on behalf of the secretary. Uh, yeah, who 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 is speaking? Uh, to you said a blank Uh, just Chris. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, you again? Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, based on uh, our records in the finance office, we do not have a line item budget for uh, social media, but uh, we do spend for uh, social media boosting. Uh, I, I will find the particular uh, expense and we will be submitting it to you, Mr. Chair, uh, on how much we've spent for social media boosting. Social media boosting. Uh, this is, we want to, to know how much it was in 2020, how much was disbursed, how much is it in the current budget 2021? And how much will you have in 2022? Uh, uh, we want that detail, okay? Y yes, Mr. Chairman. We will submit uh, our expense and uh, budget for social media boosting. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, uh, in a very light vein, Mr. Secretary and Yusek uh, uh, Ablan, I, 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 I was referring to your budget for trolls. Uh, and you, of course, you keep on denying that you have a budget for trolls. We know you will never admit that you have a budget for trolls. So assuming, uh, you know, uh, we, we, I take it that you are telling us the truth that you have no budget for trolls. But having said that, do you think we should make, we should enact a law which will ban troll farms and penalize those who engage in the trolling troll activities? Should we do that? Would you endorse that? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think it's a, it's a, a good idea to, to, uh, to enact something like that, or even perhaps uh, go, go beyond it uh, by, uh, uh, penalizing uh, people who spread fake news. Uh, since you are in this uh, experts in the field of communication, and this inevitably uh, would come, uh, uh, the, the issue of trolls would come around, and you agree that they should be banned. Can you submit to us a draft uh, uh, bill which would ban and punish uh, the trolls? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, okay, so can we expect that uh, shortly so that uh, we can examine it and uh, indeed uh, we can say that this comes from 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 the agency suspected underscored suspected of having trolls in their uh, in their budget. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we will draft it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> we also noticed. <clears throat> that uh, under PCOO, the biggest allocation for capital outlay uh, is for the construction of a media, Visayas media hub. Is this correct, sir? Yes, Mr. Chairman. And how much is the capital outlay? 200 million, Mr. Chairman. And uh, there is also an allocation for operation, uh, MOE, for this uh, uh, Visayas Media Hub? Yes, Mr. Chairman, but that will uh, come in once the building is is uh, constructed. So uh, the second phase, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is, uh, you have allocated uh, 50 million. 
for this, uh, for your next year's budget. Is that correct? Uh, may I defer to you, Sek uh, Ablan, for more clarification. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, the 50 million is allocated to equip uh, the Government Communications Academy in uh, Manolo Fortich, Bukidnon, uh, not, not the Visayas Media Hub, Mr. Chairman. I see. So, hindi pa ito sa Visayas Media Hub, uh, uh, sir. Uh, no, no, Mr. Chair. The 50 million is for the uh, Government Communications Academy in uh, Bukidnon. Uh, I see. Yeah. All right. Now, what is a Visayas Media Hub? Ako po ay taga Visayas, ah, taga Iloilo ako eh. Pero hindi ko po alam kung ano itong uh, Visayas Media Hub. First, where will this be located? And what is the 200 million capital outlay for? Chris? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, the uh, Visayas Media Hub is uh, envisioned to be constructed in uh, Mandawe, uh, Cebu. Uh, this will uh, complement the existing Mindanao Media Hub in Davao and our uh, main uh, broadcasting office in uh, Quezon City, Mr. Chair. This will uh, have a TV studio, AM, FM radio studio. Uh, in addition to that, the satellite offices of the PCOO and uh, can also be uh, served as a disaster recovery station po. Uh, okay. So, talagang a complete uh, media communication center. That, uh, that is the intention. It is called uh, Media Hub, but it's an entire complete communications system, complete with offices, studio, uh, station, radio stations, etc. Is that correct? Is that how that it is? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. And so there is an existing one, did you say, in Mindanao? In Mindanao, where are you? Yes, Mr. Chairman, there's one in uh, Davao City. Uh, there is one in Davao City. When was this constructed, the one in Davao City? We unveiled it in 2020. I believe it was constructed in 2018 or 19. Uh, so you unveil it's now fully operational yes mr chairman uh and you intend to have another propaganda center in cebu called uh visayas media hub no i mean let's let's call a spade a spade huh so you you will be having a uh, a uh, propaganda center uh, uh in uh, visayas and funding it to the tune of 200 million. By the way, uh, Mr. Secretary Andrak, there is nothing wrong with a propaganda uh, apparatus for the government because to effectively govern, you must convince our people that you are doing well, which I must say you are not, uh, uh, you're, you're not succeeding. I mean, not you, but your government is not succeeding. In any case, don't get me wrong. I am not against government telling people what they're doing. Uh, we can call it propaganda, unfortunately, but uh, th that's what it really is. We just want to know um, uh, the, the, the budgets for this. And indeed, you have said that you have a propaganda center in Davao. You have uh, now want another propaganda apparatus uh, in the Visayas uh, with a capital outlay of 200 billion. All right, now, um, what is this uh, Government Operating Communications Academy in Bukidnon, where you fund, where you have a budget of 50 million? Ano ba ito? E ito ba si Senator Subiri ang magiging announcer niyo or whatever? E <laughs> or want to, uh, to, 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 uh, to uh, handle the broadcast uh, uh, face of this uh, communication, uh, si Senator Subiri ba ito, hindi naman? I object, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Senator Dillon, I object. I thought, I, I, you know, you cannot just make him an announcer. He should be a ma uh, manager, you know. What? Uh -huh. <laughs> he should be a manager. <laughs> oh, uh, so, so well, again, we're trying to enliven this otherwise uh, 
not so exciting budget, but uh, so uh, ano itong 50 million for government communications academy? Bakit academy? May school, may, may school ba ito? Will you have, what is this? M Mr. Chairman, it is the... Propaganda apparatus, you have an academy to teach propaganda. Ganun ba yun? Hindi naman. Good propaganda, Mr. Chairman. Huh? A good propaganda. So, oh, no, no. Uh, seriously now. What is a government communications academy? Mr. Chairman, it's an academy that will will uh, give the tools, uh, give the knowledge, uh, upgrade the skills of our information officers across uh, the archipelago. Uh, it is an academy that is um, uh, working with the Development Academy of the Philippines, uh, the University of the Philippines in Los Baños, and also the Northern uh, Bukidnon State College. What do you mean? You will have uh, trainings, uh, students, what? What do you have? What, yes, what? Mr. Chairman. Uh, training, Mr. Chairman. Training, uh, short, short courses. Okay. Who do you intend to train uh, uh, in this academy? And how long has this been existing? I didn't know that you were running an academy. Oh, it's just new, Mr. Chairman. It's just ah, been it's new last year. Yeah. It's new. So this is a training ground. A new academy. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Is this where you will train trolls? <laughs> Hindi naman. Hindi naman po, Mr. Chairman. Well, gusto ko lang malaman. Baka ito yung academy ng mga trolls eh. Huh? Yeah. I know, Mr. Senator, I, last year I already uh, questioned this because I thought that uh, you could very well send the students there to UP. And why are we building a, a, you know, a center for that? Because uh, when you apply, when you become a a journalist, you graduate from MASCOM or some uh, school like that. But you know, to to create another academy is, uh, I think, uh, I don't really don't agree with that. Uh, as, as you know, Mr. Secretary, I didn't agree with that, and I gave you my objections to this idea last year. And I, you can Mr. See Chairman, how, yeah. how much was the budget for this? Fifty million. Uh, Forty-nine. Yeah, for, for, that's for an additional, for additional uh, and... allocation, right? Additional allocation of fifty million. Yeah, but but the actual construction of the building, how much was spent for it? Uh, uh, Senator Binay, may I excuse me? This is an academy. This is a training up to the barangay level, if I may, if I if I suspect. In the bayan, ganun yon. I mean, uh, uh, yes. this is MOE, uh, Madam Senator. This is not capital yeah. outlay. No, but Senator, outlay for this. No, I think the building is not yet finished because based on their uh, presentation, on it says here ongoing DPWH procurement for design and construction. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you, uh, Sen uh, Senator Binay. Uh, is this a capital outlay, Mr. Andana? Magtatayo ba kayo ng paaralan? The the capital outlay uh, that was given for for this year, Mr. Chairman, uh, would be around in the neighborhood of uh, seventy five to eighty million pesos, and then the fifty million that is being asked uh, would be for um, uh, MOE. That's correct, Chris. That is correct, Mr. Chair. Uh, capital outlay, Mr. Chair, for this year to construct the GCA is seventy nine million. Uh, our request for the 2022 budget uh, is uh, 50 million uh, for MOE uh, to, e to equip the GCA, Mr. Chairman. All right. So now I'm clarified. Thank you, uh, uh, Senator Binay. This current year, you have 79 million as CO for your academy. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman, as a capital outlay. And uh, this is still in the drawing stage or planning or, or or design stage. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right. Oh, and uh, for next year, you're asking for 50 million MOE. Tama po ba yan? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary. So, hindi pa tapos. Hindi pa tapos yung building. Hindi pa. Hindi pa niya na-inaugurate. Planning, Sir Senator, just a plan uh, according to the uh, 
the Secretariat. The DPWH will start uh, building this year, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I think a rational assessment would tell you that these are not urgent projects. Putting up an infrastructure, a building to house an academy uh, for propaganda and having 50 million again as MOE for propaganda. Mr. Secretary, uh, we have been hearing the budget uh, here uh, for the past several days now, and it is very obvious that we need funds because of the COVID response requ uh, requirements. Uh, every single peso of uh, resources, dapat ang ating unahin yung COVID, hindi po ba? Eh, dapat mauna yan, yung mga bakuna. Don't you think we can defer this academy for uh, for 2023? You have a good point, Mr. Chairman. The the capital outlay for the government communication academy was already deferred in uh, 2020 when the pandemic hit us. Uh, the, the Department of Budget and Management did promise that uh, they will. Uh, return the money, um, meaning give it back to the uh, uh, proposed budget, uh, which is the construction of the building. So that's why it was delayed. Instead of uh, constructing it in 2020, we will be constructing it instead this year. But uh, I, but you, you do have a good point, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, it should be considered, especially the, the MOE. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh... Uh, for that openings, openness to uh, the uh, priority of our pandemic response. Uh, certainly, I have already raised questions on the priorities of the budget. And as we go along, we will follow the same tact, not only in PCO, but in the other uh, agencies. We will be looking at the budgets and see if we can just postpone it for 2023 uh, because we need all the funds uh, uh, now and uh, and uh, certainly uh, projects, activities, uh, uh, <clears throat> and programs which will not suffer if we move it to 2023. We will do so because we need uh, funds for our COVID response. Uh, for example, uh, I think all of us uh, senators present in this hearing would agree that the 28 billion for the NTF cut is not that urgent that it cannot be postponed for one year and use the 28 billion for the ayuda uh, for 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 uh, the uh, assistance to the poor. Uh, this is where uh, we will be. I will be personally looking at as to which agencies, which expenses, we can defer. And I'm sure that Senator Binay, Senator Marcos, and our chair uh, would, 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 would go along with this concept because we really need to help our, our, our frontliners, especially. Um, no. <clears throat> um, okay. Is it correct that the Mindanao Media Hub in the Bau City uh, has already disbursed. First, what is the budget for the Mindanao hub in the Bau City? Mr. Chairman, may I defer to the general manager of PTV where the money came from? Is this PTV, uh, uh, Secretary? PTV, who by the or the project, the project, Mr. Chairman, is from uh, PTV. Okay, see you. So, Yes, yeah, fine. And the, Mr. Chairman, with the permission again of the minority floor leader, for for just for clarification, yung lahat ba ng media hub is under PTV or this is separate from PTV? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Senator Binay. The the budget uh, for the Mindanao Media Hub came from uh, PTV funds, while this besides Media Hub. Uh, 
will be a project of the mother agency, uh, PCO proper. And then the one of um, Quezon City. May nabanggit kasi si Yusek Ablan kanina na there's another one in Quezon City. Oh, uh, it's been uh, in, existen in existence, Mr. Chairman, as far as I could remember, um, Marcos time. De, pero yung, the one in Quezon City under PCOO, not under PTV4. Oh, we don't have a, a building project in uh, Quezon City, Ms. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, see they're, they're talking about the one in Mandawe that they want to put up, which is going to cost maybe, $100 million. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, maybe we can ask uh, Yusek Ablan, kasi kanina may nabanggit siya na there's one in Mindanao, in Davao, there's another one in Mandawe. And then there's another one in Quezon City as Media Hub. Ablan, will you address the question? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Quezon City uh, office is the office of the Philippine Information Agency, which they share with PTV and other PCO offices. It is an existing uh, facility, Mr. Chair. That that has been okay. our communications headquarters uh, since what the Secretary mentioned, Marcos time pa po. Okay, so thank you. So apparently, parang blended pala to. Merong PCO lang, may with PTV4. Tama po ba? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. The, the one in Quezon City uh, was was run by uh, Minister uh, um, uh, Sandanya, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, so yung the one in Mandawe, bakit hindi na lang under PTV? Para all of them will be under PTV. Oh, be, because uh, the the budget uh, from from uh, the, the budget allocated uh, for the Visayas Media Hub was the budget that was that was uh, approved or um, uh, recommended by by the president to uh, the Department of Budget and Management. Thus. Uh, it's a PCOO proper, which is, you know, uh, a, a department that is uh, directly under the president. Okay. okay. Thank with you. Uh, of, uh, with the permission of everyone, uh, may I ask uh, Senator Binay to uh, uh, to act as chair for the moment because I have to uh, uh, address a certain uh, problem right now. Uh, I'll be back in about five minutes. Okay. We'll Good do that, job. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, I would uh, reconfirm that the good secretary has agreed that our priorities uh, for next year should be <coughs> our pandemic uh, responses and items in the budget, which can be deferred without harming government programs, uh, in other words, which are not urgent, can be deferred for 2020, 20, 20, 2023. Among these, for example, would be this uh, uh, budget for the uh, uh, media hubs. Uh, and so we can look at that in more detail uh, at the appropriate time. Uh, because uh, <clears throat> uh, really, as we said, uh, uh, we uh, have to, accept the fact that our resources are very tight. Our fiscal, uh, our financial position as a country is very tight. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's already 12 noon. Uh, we still have a number of, uh, yes, I yield to, sec to Senator Marcos. Thank you very much. I'd just like to take off from our good minority leader, Madam Chairwoman. And I'm a little bit confused by the presentation regarding capital outlay. It's as uh, confusing as the uh, PS and personal services. Um, out of the 315.38 million allocations for capital outlay, the biggest share goes to PCOO proper. Earlier, Secretary uh, Martin Andanar said that a total of 740 million has already been obligated or disbursed. The new par portion that you are asking from uh, the legislature is the 265.91 uh, million. And this is only PCOO. So I'd like to understand what assets or improvements will be procured 
by the PCOO proper. Because then this is followed by BBS, which has its own uh, amount. So it's very clear that the bulk of this is going to PCOO proper. All the new expenditures intended for 2022 go to PCOO proper. Uh, I would like to know what is this capital outlay? What are the assets involved? And the breakdown of the 740 that uh, the secretary already said uh, was the compounded amount from previous years. Uh, Secretary Andanar, uh, somebody's muted, Yata. Oh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, may I again uh, defer to Undersecretary Chris Aplan, who is our uh, uh, USEC for, for Admin and Finance, to be able to give us a more detailed answer, Mr. Chairman? What falls under PCOO proper? Because we hear of these transformers and transmitters that are ancient and derived from the 1970s are not functioning properly. And yet, um, most of it in your budget is actually going to PCOO proper and not to this radio and uh, TV provincial stations. Um, Madam Chair, may I respond to Senator Marcos? Yes, please. Steve Isaac Ablan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, um, the total uh, request of the PCO for uh, 2022 is 740. Uh, for the total number requested by PCO proper is 740 million 622,000. The yes, breakdown I, is. I saw that in the in the chart, but I wanted to know nga. Because the new portion of that 740, because there's GSIS, na dyan, di ba? Halo -halo na yan eh. Yung bagong disbursement dyan is 265. Anyway, 740 is worse than 265. Uh, it's much, much bigger. It's times three. Ano ba ang uh, mga assets involved dyan? Yes, Madam Chair, the 265 million is our capital outlay. It is broken down uh, into the 49.4 million uh, operating requirements for the Government Communications Academy. The 200 million wait, is for the construction second, of. Um, sorry, Chris, I have to stop you right there. You just said that's operating cost. That's M O O E. That's not uh, capital outlay. You just said that's operating um, cost for the academy. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, operating requirements. Million assets and, uh, and uh, improvements. Bakit nasa capital outlay? Uh, Madam Chair, it is recorded as under capital outlay. Uh, Costly na yan. Kasi very magulo na yan talaga. Kasi yung inyo, meron na kayong mga contract of work na alam na natin nasa MOE. Eh, by right, dapat nasa PS yun. May PS cap tayo. Ngayon, dito sa capital outlay, hinahaluan rin ang operating expenses. Para ang gulo naman yata ng libro natin, boss. Okay, you said 49 million. We have uh, quite a bit to go. Yes, Mr. yes, Madam Chair. 200 million, is, 200 million is for the construction of the Visayas Media Hub. Ayaw and uh, we're requesting... Na. That is correct. And we are requesting for. Question, why does that fall under PCOO proper? Bakit hindi linagay sa PTV, linagay sa radio, bakit hindi sa iba? Kasi doon naman sila talaga. Uh, Mr. Madam, Madam Chair, uh, the allocation for the 200 million for the Visayas Media Hub to be under the PCOO because it is supposed to be an integrated uh, media hub uh, to include all agencies. Uh, and uh, GOCCs uh, of the PCOO. Uh, we learned from the... I don't think um, integration costs 200 million. Coordinate, coordinate lang yan ng mga existing, uh, uh, existing facilities in TV and radio and the infamous, in the infamous SOCMED. Um, yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, with the Mindanao Media Hub, since it's a project of our People's Television Network, and uh, the the other the other partners of the PCO family are co-equal. 
uh, it, we thought it best that the next media hub should be under the umbrella of the PCO proper in order for the secretary to properly manage the implementation. So, yes, I um, understand that operationally that may be correct and that the organization encompasses more than one arm. But the question is, nakakalito yan sa budget? Kasi bakit hindi niyo linagay yan sa radyo at saka sa TV kung yun yung balak? Nagkakaroon tuloy kami ng suspecha na iba ang paggagamitan ng 200 million na yan. Baka naman nandyan yung boosting. Uh, no, no, Madam Chair. Uh, wala, po, wala po yung boosting dun sa 200 million. Uh, capital outlay po talaga. Uh, for, can you give us a list of the equipment involved or the buildings that you're going to build? Because you said 49 uh, million is operating, 200 million is uh, integrating. Uh, all of these are action words that do not involve at any point construction or the supply of equipment. Uh, Mad Madam Chair, we have been confirmed by our budget and accounting division that uh, the recording of the 49 million for the GCA is correctly under uh, capital outlay. We will be providing the committee. Uh, yeah. I, I'm uh, sure it's correct. Ang question lang is ano ba talaga yung mga assets na yon? Sa uh, Senator Drillon, please. Yes, uh, so Senator Marcos. You know, do not forget that next year is an election year. There is, a, there is a lot of coordination, integration necessary. So, you, you know, but anyway. Uh, oh, minority leader is in a particularly naughty mood this morning. <laughs> Secretary uh, Adenar and Yusek Ablan have agreed that where certain activities and programs and capital outlay are not that urgent, we maybe we can defer it to the budget of 2023 because we need every centavo next year, not only for PCO, but from the across the bureaucracy in order to fund our, our, our uh, pandemic response uh, budget. As for example, we need 45 billion for uh, booster, booster shots. So we need every item, the budget, our, our, our uh, sources of funds, our revenues are, are, are not recovering from the pre-pandemic levels, and therefore, I would like to think that <clears throat> patriotic as they are, uh, Secretary Ablan and uh, Secretary Andanar would agree that kung magpapaliban natin, ipaliban muna natin, italagay natin sa ayuda ng ating mga kababayan na mahihirap sa panahon ngayon. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Ang chairman natin, kumain na ng panangalian. Nawala na eh. <laughs> I'm not sure that Yusek Ablan and uh, Secretary uh, Martin Andanar agree with that donation. <laughs> they look particularly unhappy. But uh, having said that, uh, siguro you can give us a breakdown because we cannot understand these assets and equipment. Parang wala naman eh. At saka may 16 million ka pang uh, utang, Chris. Hindi pa kwentas klaras dito. Yes, Did Madam Chair, we will be submitting. Uh, the 16 million, Madam Chair, is for ICT equipment. Yeah, but you're renting laptops for heaven's sake. Even the COA already plugged the eight laptops and the supply of two cameras all being rented. Paano ba yan? So you're not buying, you're renting. So where is all this capital outlay going to? Uh, Madam Chair, I can assure the uh, good senator that uh, for our proposal 16.5, this will be procurement, uh, Mr. Chair. We will be buying. Uh, but it, it has come for that. You have been renting cameras as well as laptops, isn't it? Th that, that is correct, Madam Chair. Uh, we have been renting. But uh, and that it's is why. appropriately flagged by COA as well as a disgraceful practice for government. We have uh, received an approval from the MITI under the DICT, Madam Chair, to procure. Uh, we have limitations the on not the rentals, right, Chris? Uh, yes, 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 Madam Chair. Um, all, all procurement for uh, IT-related equipment must go through the MITHI program of the DICT. Yes, and, of course. Uh, we have been hampered, Madam Chair, in uh, with the order 
And so finally, Mr. Madam Chair, after several years, we finally convinced the DICT to allow us to procure and not to rent because we have been flagged in the past. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I'm, I have full support for any investments in engineering, but I'm very puzzled by the direction that the PCOO is taking. Are we going to refurbish and enhance old equipment and facilities, or are we going to be building all these fancy new integrated media hubs in Mindanao, Visayas, and elsewhere? Um, which brings me to January 2016, when then President Aquino approved the privatization of IBC 13. Back in the 70s, it was the number one channel, and uh, the Governance Commission on GOCCs, GCG, through a public bidding, was supposed to present a floor price of 10 billion. At present, is the plan still to privatize IBC 13? at a higher price since the upgrade was done or is the idea to uh, abandon it or are we improving it because we have in the past also given money for these stations medyo nalilito ako sa inyong direction mr chairman uh, may i uh, defer to Please our ibc uh, ibc chairman uh, hexalon alvarez to answer the question Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, uh, yes, President Alvarez, please. Uh, yes, actually, uh, Senator Marcos is correct in saying that uh, it should have been privatized. IBC has been scheduled for privatization. Unfortunately, uh, IBC 13 uh, has been a, so to speak, uh, a bleeding asset of the government. Uh, for quite some time. What happened? And then matagal na yun eh. That's true. That, 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 that's true, Madam Chair. Unfortunately, it's only now under this current administration that there have been steps or moves to uh, revive the privatization of uh, IBC 13. Uh, steps it's have been undertaken to privatize right now. Just recently, up, upon my assumption of office, we've already conducted. When was that? When was that? Sorry, uh, just July. Uh, previous to that, from 2016, wala nangyari, 2016 hanggang 20 was actually, it was actually initiated uh, uh, at 2016, and then the pandemic hit us. No, uh, tayo naman, 2016, eh, yung pandemic 2020, liman taon yun. There was a, the process, ma'am, was actually uh, initiated from 2016, and it took some time in order to compile all of the inventory nationwide. And most of the equipment that has been inventoried has been uh, either destroyed or the wear and tear has unfortunately uh, placed IBC in a situation. Thank you, President Hex. Um, I'm very familiar with the inventory, the equipment, and uh, the other assets of IBC 13. And uh, I'm fully aware that a lot of it is junk. It's very, very old stuff. So That's why correct. would it take so long? You just make a list and tell COA that uh, we're selling this for scrap and it's over. Why did it take so long? Actually, Sen Aini, if I remember it correctly, since 2016, para every budget hearing, lagi sinasabi nila na ipaprivatize. Correct! Kaya nga. Pero, ha pero hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin siya napaprivatize. Pero Nance, every private hearing, sinasabi rin natin na napakadaming job order, ang tataas ng sweldo, at uh, very inflated ang number ng ASEC at USEC. Parati naman taon-taon eh, parang... Naiinip na ako sa sarili ko, mabuti nagpapatawa si Senator Drillon. <laughs> um, Madam Chair, if 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 I may uh continue my uh rep my Yes, my please. Yes, please. Uh with regard to that, um PCOO uh, and IBC has already engaged the services previously uh, with the development back of Bank of the Philippines and their observation with regard to this has actually said to set aside the actual privatization process because of the pandemic. But we are still pursuing this. We are still actually pursuing this uh, in spite of the uh, former observations of uh, 
of, of, of DBP, and we are trying to get the best possible. What do you um, mean the former observations of DBP? Well, they, they used to be the transactional. Sorry, sorry, it's just a matter of information. Yes, uh, they used to be the uh, transactional advisor with regard to the privatization, but this was before my time. And uh, they came up with a uh, observation with regard to uh, setting aside the privatization process. Setting aside? Yes. Why is that? I know so many oh, politicians, oh, oh. political parties, um, oligarchs who are dying to buy a TV station. Well, if if you would look at currently our, our uh, the current debt that IBC is in, I really doubt that there would be anyone who would be willing at its current state uh, to purchase uh, IBC in the middle of a pandemic. And this was actually the what uh, the Devel Development Bank of the Philippines uh, advised. However, because, however, because foreign denominated loans, right? Excuse me, excuse, excuse me, Madam Chair. Uh, I didn't quite get that. It has foreign denominated loans. I'm not aware of the foreign denominated loans. However, I do know why, that. Uh, hirap sila dyan. But I am not sure. In any case, uh, sabi nga ni Senator Nancy, sana mabigyan na ng tuldok ito kasi taon-taon na namin naririnig, naiinip na rin kami magtanong. I think Senator Drilon uh, had something to add. How were you raising for your hand, Pop? Yes. I have one more question to uh, Mr. Alvarez. Uh, He's he. How do you pronounce your name? Hexilon. Hexilon. Hex your son is. Uh, uh, my 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 father used to be uh, Senator Sunny. Uh, yes, yeah. Sunny Alvarez. Huh? And you sound like your mother, Cecil. <laughs> Thank you. So again, <laughs> you know, I I feel so old because you know, <laughs> Mr. Amlan, uh, Mr. Alvarez, uh, Mr. Andanar. Ako uh, din po. Madam Senator Binay, Senator oh, your fathers are my contemporaries, my goodness gracious. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, Mr. Anagar, I'm sorry, but there are still a lot of senators who would want to raise questions, so we have to defer endorsement of your budget, uh, no less than the Senate President has requested us that we should not close the hearings today because he still has a number of questions. So uh, unless our my other colleagues would have still would want to ask questions now, maybe we can defer it to some other time. It's already 12.15. Uh, yes, uh, yes. I, I, what am I presiding? I'm not supposed to be presiding. <laughs> no, <laughs> the, the, the committee has been abandoned. <laughs> yeah. And Amy, are you are you finished with your questioning? Yeah, or can I no. just interject? Go ahead, Dan. Okay, just a few questions before ano, we go to our lunch break. Um for for ano, for Secretary Andanar, alam naman ho natin na uh yung PCO is very important talang lalo na dun sa COVID-19 information dissemination, right? Uh like for 2020, how much did you spend uh, for this campaign for COVID? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the entire 2020, we used uh, the budget, the, the regular budget allocated to us uh, for 2020. The exact amount, I, I, I wouldn't have the numbers with me. Uh, but uh, we did not spend uh, anything beyond that was uh, appropriated in our budget. Uh, the reason why it uh, was was successful was because of our strong partnership with the Kapistanan ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas, um, which uh, basically offered their, their uh, airtime for free. Actually, Secretary Andanara, I'm sorry, but I have to I have to uh, beg to differ because I don't think. Uh, successful yung campaign nyo with regards to COVID-19. There's so much disinformation and uh, for example, can you show to the committee yung mga materials that you created for COVID-19 information dissemination? Oh yes, Mr. Chairman, we can, we can show you. 
And as far as uh, achievement or success for me is concerned, it's about uh, reaching the, the farthest uh, barangay of this uh, country in terms of broadcast, which uh, definitely the government media cannot reach. And because of our partnership with the KBP, we were able to, to um, inform the public the importance of um, well, for example, like collaterals. Di ba trabaho niyo yung mag-print ng collaterals? Have you printed materials uh, for COVID-19? We have uh, printed only within our means, but the printing was done uh, mostly by the Department of Health because they have their own budget for this, Mr. Chairman. So how much was spent for your budget for collateral? I would have to, uh, if you allow me, Mr. Chairman, can I submit the the, the exact uh, budget for that of how much was spent because I don't have the numbers in here right now. Okay. And did you also have collaterals for your campaign against, ano, and to local communist armed conflict? The National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict was uh, shouldered by... Uh, the NTF, uh, the National Task Force, not the PCO. Uh, sandali, parang, di ba tam tama po ba, Senator Drillon, di ba technically dapat walang budget ang NTF? Because it's just like a, it's just a coordinating body. Uh, yeah, yes, it's supposed to be a task force, but they have a budget of 28 billion, and this year they have a budget of 16 and a half billion. I do not know. <laughs> I raise all kinds of questions, but we are just ignored. So, yung mga collaterals, hindi siya taken out of the PCOO budget? It, it is part of the NTF LCAC budget? Um, if you look at the presentation, uh, the uh, budget of the NTF LCAC are supposed to be for specific uh, programs, uh, activities, and, yes, project. uh, projects. Projects, uh, but uh, I, I don't, I don't really know yeah. how this uh, budget is being disbursed, uh, and that we intend to ask when the budget yeah, yeah. comes before us. The, Secretary and and because it's in some presentation that I read, I think PIA they have a specific program for NTF LCAC. Hmm. Um, so. Maybe I can ask Secretary Andanat, do you contribute to the activities of the NTF LCAC? Uh, is, do you, uh, do you trans, because in, in TESDA, for example, uh, their attention was called because they moved part of their budget to NTF LCAC. Uh, is there a similar uh, setup in your shop, uh, Secretary Andanat? There is no a similar arrangement in the PCOO. What we do is provide our technical expertise and uh, our airtime, which is uh, basically uh, an airtime that is also given to other agencies that need the, the exposure uh, in our government channels. So, Secretary, can you submit how much airtime was given for LCAC, how much airtime was given for COVID, and ano the other ano nyo, campaign? Okay, Mr. Chairman, we'll do that. Na medyo significant yung budget nyo. And then, um, I know for a fact, I think 2019 budget ba or 2020 budget? You had the parang European tour, right? The, that's a 2020 budget, uh, Mr. Chairman, but um, uh, part of the Duterte Legacy campaign, but that was... Um, that was a return to the government because of the pandemic. Ah, so hindi nyo, this was not utilized for 2020? Only during the month of February, then after that, wala na po. And then for next year's budget, or this year, I would assume wala dahil wala because po. of COVID. But for next year? Wala rin po. So wala na tong European, what, what was part of that European tour? Well, it was it was uh, going to the different uh, embassies and uh, giving them a snapshot of the Duterte legacy, uh, also in engaging with the United Nations, 
um, also with the Reporters Without Borders and different journalists uh, in Europe. And how much was spent? I don't have the exact figure with me, uh, Mr. Chairman, but we can give it to you. Okay, baka si Yusek Ablan would know at the moment. Um, Madam Chair, we uh, do not have the numbers at the moment. Uh, we will be submitting uh, the expenses for the the Europe caravan. Po. Okay. The, going back then to PIA, because I think PIA is in charge of ad placement and news content, right? Yes, PIA was in charge of ad placement uh, during the time of President Aquino. But uh, they ceased to to um, to uh, implement that you know, that uh, charge uh, since it looked at the administration because of some um, difficulties and and also some findings from from COA. I COA. So news content na lang sila. Tama po, Mr. Chair. Okay. So so who's doing the ad placement? The ad placements uh, are done by the agencies before because they, they used to uh, download it, but now the agencies themselves, but there's certain projects that uh, they download it to the PCO, like the national ID uh, for for those projects, uh, the, the PCO does the the uh, procurement. So, you know, lang yung ad placement, no, you for the Philipp for the Philippine ID, wala na kayong ibang ano, ad placement. National ID, I believe we also have for the Department of Energy, pero hindi ko lang alam kung natuloy yun because of the pandemic. Uh, and also the Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program of the National Housing Authority. You you did the ad placement or you're going to do the ad placement for next year? We did ad placements for some, but I don't have the exact uh, placements with me, but we can uh, furnish you a copy, Mr. Chairman. Okay, right. so for next year, hindi nyo pa alam kung ano yung gagawin nyo ng ad placement. For next year po, uh, well, depending on on uh, what uh, projects that are, uh, that will be downloaded to us by the different agencies. Oh, but at the moment, our existing lang is um, the one of um, National ID. National and ID. And uh, the other one? The Duterte Legacy campaign, uh, the National ID, uh, the PSA. Uh, but but we need to uh, okay. let me get back to you on that. Uh, okay. And, and then doing some video presentation yung kaniya para you show the video para you did the video against um, related to sa local communist armed conflict. Tama, di ba para there's a there's a video you you produced a video right? <laughs> A documentary. Meron bang something similar with regards to COVID? Not a documentary, but uh, different materials. Yes, we do, Mr. Chairman. We we have a weekly uh, documentary being released uh, about the COVID-19 efforts of the government called Lagging Handa. Hindi ba ano yun? More on parang daily briefer yung Lagging Handa. May documentary portion ba yun? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have a docu we have a documentary portion that we uh, release every week. Okay, can you submit the materials? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and then dun sa, going back to the boosting, um, part of the boosting budget ba are personal accounts of PCOO staff? Can I can I defer this question to you, Sir Chris Ablan, or uh, Director Vinci Beltran, who is in charge of the PSA, Mr. Chairman? You Sir Ab Ablan. Uh, Mad Madam Chair, we defer to Director Vinci Beltran. Ah, sorry, pal. Social media. <laughs> Director <laughs> Vinci. Where are you? Um. Yeah. Sorry. Nasaan ka? Wait, hindi rin kita mahanap. Sorry po, ayaw po mag- Okay. Okay. Uh, meron po tayong media placements po for the PSA campaign po and meron po tayong TVC placements po. Um, nasa around um, 20 million po tayo doon. Ano yung 20, 20 million pesos? 
Yes po. For boosting? Of the PSA po. Um, ad placement po yun. Okay. Ad placement. So, TV and radio to? O soft um, med? Kun, kunin ko lang po yung exact po na details po in a while po. Okay. Siguro, Secretary Andanar, ano ulit yung position ni Director Vinci? 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 Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. She is a director uh, in my office and uh, heads the special projects. And what is part of the special projects? The, the troll. I no, think, po. Senator Drillon, the troll is here. Special projects. No po, okay. ito po yung unit po namin is for the downloaded funds po from other agencies. So yung mga ginagawa po namin ay related po sa mga campaigns po such as yun nga po PSA and yung iba pa pong projects na uh, may download po like or may mga memorandum of agreement po ang PCOO such as the uh, CFO po kami po yung gumagawa po ng mga uh, creative materials po nila. Ano yung CFO? Commission on Filipinos Overseas po. Okay. So, si CFO din na-download sa inyo. Siguro, can you just submit? Total may next hearing pa naman eh. Ano yung, uh, yung, ano yung mga different government agencies na nagda-download sa inyo either for you to provide uh, the materials or for you to do the ad placement or boosting? Yes po, ma'am. Oh, kasi Siguro kanina po, para ang nabanggit lang was... Uh, for the national ID but apparently yung CFO din pala nagda-download sa inyo ng pondo for their um content. Uh, Ma'am, correction na po ng um yung special projects po um mix po siya ng may download yung iba po ay memorandum of agreement po um ang either pwede pong ang dina-download po nila or binibigyan po kami ng access sa mga editing softwares po. So yun lang okay. po yung aming request. Then, Pero so, magkano, magkano ngayon si special projects? Ang pinakamalaki po is the PSA po. Um, yung total budget po niya ay nasa 400, around 400 million po. Pero um, distributed po ito sa mga attached agencies. So, meron din po ang uh, Radio Pilipinas, yung PBS po. Uh, meron din po ang RTVM, PNA, uh, Bureau of Communication Services. Uh, and uh, tumutulong din po yung ibang pong mga agencies dito. Um, the whole campaign po, hindi lang po si PCOO as mother agency po yung humahawak. Pero yung main po ay nasa admin po sa uh, PCOO. Wait, so nasa inyo si 400 million? Uh, distributed po siya um, sa ano po, attached agencies po. Bibigyan po namin po kayo ng breakdown. Okay. Ma and then, ano pa yung iba? Um, ongoing po yung uh, negotiation po, meron po halimbawa po yung Department of Energy na e-power mo. So yung mga ganun po na campaigns. Uh, meron po yung Task Force Zero Hunger. Um, yun po ang campaign po natin uh, with PACC, yung Anti-Corruption Project Kasangga. Uh, magkano? Din... magkano? So can you just give us the total amount and then submit yes. na lang the breakdown for us to study it? Para in the next hearing, we can ask more questions yes. about it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, when so, I joined that uh, request, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is the request of Senator Dina, and now we are discovering that there are additional budgets uh, from other agencies. So I joined the request of Senator Dina. Can you give us a consolidated list of the additional allocations you have from other agencies so that we will have an idea of how much your total budget is, uh, Mr. Secretary. Yes. Can we request that, Secretary at the NAR? And then, can you also include what entails that contract? Um, TV, um, ano ben? TV, radio, kasama ba yung boosting sa Facebook account? Can you also include those details? Check the commute ka. Oh, sorry. And the memorandum of agreement, Mr. Chairman, we'll give you a copy. Okay. But going back to my question, then, sa boosting, mm -hmm. are you boosting personal accounts of uh, PCOO family members? Boosting. I defer to Director Vinci Beltran, who is uh, the one in charge. 
Um, for the PCOO po, uh, yeah, for the PSA project po, wala po. Uh, talagang uh, focus lang po yung uh, distribution of the funds. It would focus dun po sa uh, campaign lang po talaga. So, inaantay lang po namin yung approval ng um, ne, PSA. Wait, actually, ne, Director Vinci, ang tanong ko, kasi di ba may mga personal, di ba wala laging issue sa PCOO na nakukomingle yung personal account dun sa official account, di ba? Kasi, ano? So, like, meron ba kayong mga account na binuboost na hindi sa official PCOO account? Well, um, for my project po, um, sa mga projects po under me, wala po. Um, so, the there's a possibility, there's another office na merong budget. Kasi in your office, there's no budget, but pwede merong iba. Um, Tama ba? Sino? If I may, uh, Mr. Uh, Secretary, uh, Secmart, uh, yung official page po ng PCOO, ang may handle po nito ay si ASEC JV po. Arsena. Ang hawak ko lang po ay mga projects po na downloaded po or yung yeah, in cooperation with other agencies. Yun lang so, po. so Director Vinci, dun sa mga hawak mong accounts, you boost their page. Kunwari, uh, itong sa national ID, you boost the, the, the official page for that campaign. Right? Yes po, naka-program po siya for boosting. Ah, okay. So, can you provide also that data? I don't know, baka si Yusek Ablan would probably no kasi di ba kanina na pag-usapan natin yung budget niyo for boosting social media accounts can you give us parang a detail kung ano-ano yung mga account na binuboost niyo yes yes madam chair we will be submitting but to uh, to answer the query uh, PCO proper does not boost the personal accounts of any of our officials or employees uh, madam chair but do you have kunyari, ampli amplification efforts not necessarily boosting um amplification um that has expense none none madam chair so what well i'm gonna like uh or do you have an office that monitors kung ano yung um kung Kasi I, I'm sure you have to check kung nagbaman siya yung, yung information campaign nyo, di ba? Meron ba kayo monitoring din? Right now, Madam Chair, our monitoring is what is available by the social media platforms. We, we, we have not procured uh, any social media listening tool other than the, the, free, the free ones, Madam Chair. Okay. So can you just submit to us yung mga campaign nyo and then how successful or not successful yung mga ganung kung ano man yung campaign na ni Ranyo Yes ma yes madam chair we will be submitting a report of our campaigns okay, so, for PCO So yung mga kunare yung Twitter account ng PIA or Facebook account you don't boost that Um PIA um uh, Director General uh, Portadera uh, uh, Director General Coloping uh would be able to address if they, they boost their uh, Twitter accounts po. I'm, I'm not familiar po with the PIA. Uh, we can defer uh, to the uh, Chair. Uh, am yes. I allowed to? Yes, uh, yes, we, you're recognized. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, we don't have any budget for boosting uh, for our 90 Facebook pages and Twitter accounts. So everything is organic, Madam Chair. Ilan, you have 90 pages? Yes, ma'am, because uh, we do community pages down to the grassroots. So uh, we have a national Facebook page for PIA, and then we have regional pages okay. per region, and then we have pages down to the provincial level. Okay. Okay. So so Facebook, you have 90 FB pages, right? Yes. So yes, Twitter, so Twitter. Uh, we have a central desk for the national uh, PIA, and then we have uh, several... Twitter accounts for our regional offices, but uh, uh, that's all, Madam Chair. Meron ba kayong TikTok? May TikTok ba yung PIA? Uh, wala, uh, wala, pa. Pa. wala pa. Wala pa, ma'am. Wala pa. So, FB lang kay Instagram? Uh, Instagram po, meron po, Madam Chair. So, how many accounts in Instagram? Uh, as far as I know, the official is only one, Madam Chair, the okay. central office. And then the Twitter account is one or regional din? 
uh, we have one official for central office. I'll have to check, madam, if we have for our regional offices. What I'm sure of is that uh, on Facebook, we have presence uh, nationwide. Okay. Siguro, can you just submit to the committee yung staffing requirements ng PIA for all of these accounts? Yes, ma'am. We will provide, madam And Chair. then siguro, pakisabi na rin kung, job, kung COS ba to or... Um, um, ano ba yan? Uh, may permanent plantilla yung nagahandle ng mga account. We will do, we will do, Madam Chair. We will submit. Okay. And PIA also does the content, right? Yes, ma'am. We curate the content uh, and we distribute the content as well, Madam Chair. Okay. okay. Siguro for all na lang, Secretary and Danar, can the different uh, departments under PCOO, like uh, yung Bureau... B, ano, BBS, BCS, um, and ID, PIA, can they submit to the committee yung mga collateral, well, number one collateral sila for COVID-19 information campaign, or siguro submit na lang yung, ano, yung uh, content that they've been uh, producing, whether COVID or uh, yung mga achievements ng uh, Duterte presidency, or um, ano pa ba yung mga ano nyo? Ano ba yung mga major information campaigns nyo? I guess yung LCAC. Tama ba, Secretary Andanar? Yun yung mga milestone projects nyo? What are your milestone information projects? Yeah, we will, we will uh, do, Mr. Chairman. We will submit it to you. Okay. Siguro yun na lang muna. Um, I think, Senator Pimentel, are you still there? Bomsek, nandiyan pa ba si Senator Pimentel? I think siya na lang yung hindi nakakatanong eh. Uh, uh, I'm back. Uh, I think it's logged out already. I couldn't see you. Okay. Senator Nancy, I'm back. Ayan, yan. Senator Gordon is back. I'm I'm uh, done for Mr. Chairman. I think we can uh, hold the, uh, suspend the hearing until uh, the next time uh, because uh, there are additional hearings that I have to undertake today uh, that's a DFA, and I have a major Red Cross international meeting going on right now. That's why I had to leave a while ago. Uh, 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 this is a Southeast Asia Leaders Conference. So with the indulgence of everybody, I'd like to suspend the hearing okay. until uh, next week. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, yes. can, can, we request, can we schedule it subject to their you know, submission of all the document uh, of all the documents that we ask kasi ang hirap naman ng mag-schedule ng hearing kung hindi pa nila nasasubmit yung mga hiningi namin this morning precisely so uh, we will ask them to submit within the next 2 or 3 days after which we will decide when the next hearing will be would that be good yes thank you mr chairman uh the secretary uh the honorable secretary of uh uh PCOO is uh uh, requested to submit all the documents requested by all the senators here present, uh, and the, the chair, the uh, concept uh, will please uh, make a report on what documents uh, have to be brought. Uh, Secretary Ole, uh, Secretary Ole, please make sure that you have a report to all the senators of what uh, documents we have requested. Uh, and then uh, as soon as we get all those documents within the next, uh, I suppose, by Monday, uh, would that be ideal, uh, Mr. Secretary? Uh, would that be ideal for you? Or, or to submit all the documents requested? Uh, perhaps Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes, yes. yes. Secretary Yusha Kablan, are you asking for the floor? Yes, Mr. Chair, on behalf of the Secretary, may re request to submit it by Tuesday. We need to collate the uh, data from the other agencies. We'll give you all the time we need, but remember that we have to pass the budget. So if we delay, then uh, if there are further delays, then, then there'll, there'll be, it'll be, you'll, be paying, you'll, you'll have to pay the, the uh, penalty of the delay. Uh, so Tuesday then. Uh, so after that, uh, we can call perhaps a meeting by Friday or at the earliest by Monday next next week. That'll be okay, uh, Senator Binay? Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, so let's uh, take it that Monday, uh, Secretary Olay. Yes. 
Not this Monday, it's going no, Monday, no, but maybe Monday next week. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, uh, that's a very formidable mask you have, and I can't hardly uh, hear you. Uh, what did you say? What is Senator Gordon? You will have to take off your Sorry. mask because it's not going to be able to do it. Unless your boyfriend is there. Huh. Shield. All right. Noted. Yes, Pop. Sorry. Noted, Pop. Noted. I mean, that's Senator Pangilinan's line. I don't want to be noted. I just want to make sure that it is scheduled. Huh? Um, yes, Are we yes sir. Are fond of using noted? What does that mean? The instructions are very clear. You receive it by Tuesday. You distribute it to all the senators. And by Monday, we call a meeting. In a Monday, next Monday, right? Not this Monday, but next Monday. That would be September 27th. Yes, yes. And the meeting will be at 10 o'clock. All right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. On that note, uh, I'm sorry, I don't think Senator Pimentel is here. I would have wanted to call him, but uh, I would like to call. thank everybody. Uh, you have to go through this rights of uh, budget uh, process. Uh, no apologies uh, intended. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're very transparent here, as I said, preliminarily, and we want to get to the bottom of this because I must tell you that a lot of senators have asked to attend this meeting, and uh, they precisely, uh, the questions that are raised by the senators are those questions that have been, uh, that are, have been upsetting some of the senators concerning the budget of PCOO. So let's be forthright so that we can proceed harmoniously into the task of uh, approving the budget of the PCOO. All right. On that note, I hereby suspend uh, the hearing uh, uh, for this aforesaid date of the 27th September at 10 o'clock with, uh, with the caveats that uh, uh, the requested uh, uh, documents uh, must be submitted by Tuesday. Thank you all very much and have a, the rest of the good afternoon to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.